If you're into Bowman prospecting, you need to act now because Bowman buying season is wide open. Let's data dive. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot. And today I'm doing something you never thought I would ever, ever do. If you saw my video from August of 2022, I explained why I don't like doing Bowman prospecting. If you want my full list of reasons for that, go watch that video. In spite of those reasons, there are plenty of people who do like Bowman prospecting. And in truth, it tends to be one of the more notable, dare I even say more reliable ways to make money in all of sports card speculation. The reason is that these cards do in fact come out before the players ever make it to the bigs, unlike basketball and football cards, which are released after they've already played some. So I did another video of this earlier this year about the best time to sell prospect cards, which spoiler is right on the day of their first call up to the majors. So this time I'm gonna break down some reasons why the next eight weeks or so are the best time to look to buy any and all baseball prospects that you're interested in speculating on. And as always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers with significantly more baseball cards and Bowman prospects than any other app out there. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE when you check out. This now gets you 14 days completely free and then 20% off for life as long as you're subscribed. Now let's get into the data. All right, so I'm gonna go through some charts and graphs as per usual, and I've got a few different principles, some different concepts here to keep in mind. The first, only buy Bowman first. Don't mess with the other stuff. That's my opinion. That's also the opinion of a lot of people. The Bowman first are the ones that tend to be staples. They tend to be liquid. They're what people go to first when they start looking to buy these up. All the other inserts, all the second year Bowman non-rookie, I call them tweener cards, where it's not the first and it's not a rookie card. Some of those can be really cool PC collector cards. They're not necessarily the ones that people are gonna to go to for speculation and investment opportunities. The second thing, look for opportunities in ratios. So I'm talking about where the multiplier of a PSA 10 over a PSA 9 just doesn't make sense. Or maybe where the raw presents an incredible grading opportunity when you see the 10 going for four, five, six, eight X what the raw is going for. Number three, Look at other grading companies beyond PSA. You see us use the charts here a lot for PSA, and that's because there's a lot more sales volume for those cards. It makes it a lot easier to see a trend line over time. Yet in the off season, grades like BGS, SGC, CGC, and others can fly under the radar in auctions. And then you can just look to hold those and sell those at a normalized price. Some people crack and cross. Whatever your fancy there, you can sometimes get a really good deal on something like an SGC 10. And we're gonna see an example of that. Four, Look for auctions ending at weird times, especially during the day on weekdays. Sometimes you'll see these consigners and other people. I don't know if it's accidental or intentional or what, but I have no idea why you would ever have an auction end at like 11 in the morning on a Wednesday. That doesn't make any sense. And you might be able to get a really good deal on a card if that's the case. And then fifth, if you're looking for long-term holds, many baseball hobbyists will tell you to stick to the parallels with lineage. What I'm talking about is like true colors, the golds, the reds, the oranges, the purples, blues, things like that, versus the shimmers, the lavas, other kind of newer designs that are on those refractors. Some of those we just don't know long-term where those will stand. And what we've seen in the past with things like that that came and went is that they just don't hold the value long-term like those true colors do, which have that lineage over time. So the first chart, now we're gonna jump into it enough yapping. Let's look at J-Rod. J-Rod already obviously up to the majors, we're gonna use a little bit of historical data, and I did use this exact chart in the past, but what I wanna show you is, this is where J-Rod got called up. He started on opening day in 2022 with the Mariners, and if you look at the chart before that, so we just came through this period, you see it doesn't look significant, but if I scroll down into this space, you can see, for example, let me go back here to this one, this card was down about 18%. As you look at this and you saw the hype start to build around J-Rod, that normalized line, I'm on the price changes by percentage. So it's gonna start at zero for all these cards and then it's gonna show you each one respective to itself, how it did over time. You can see that all of them had a little bit of a dip during this time frame. So that's why I'm saying this, this, if you look at a lot of cards, a lot of players, a lot of prospects, that tends to be true for baseball cards, but especially the prospects right now. We've got our eyes on you know, MLB playoffs and other things. So when we look at prospects, people aren't thinking about them. That's why I'm saying I would be buying right now. So let's jump over. 
I put the top 30 prospect names, some of whom are now in the major leagues, like Evan Carter, who got called up late in the season, has been playing very well. Some of them are in the majors, but this was the top 30 names from the MLB top 100 prospect list. I just threw them into our filter here, one by one, just kind of uh, typed them out easily. And then I sorted by, or looked at price movements by player. Over the last 90 days, you can see only Evan Carter is up. He's up 34%. Jackson Holiday essentially flat, Carson Williams flat, and then you can go down the list and all of these other 30 players are down to some extent or another. So like I said, right now, pretty much heading into like mid-December is when I would be looking to buy some of these cards and you don't have to rush it. Just because it's this time frame doesn't mean, oh, I'm just gonna go buy this, I couldn't possibly find a better deal. I've been looking at a handful, even though I know I said I don't like to do a lot of prospecting. I am interested in Jackson Holiday and I've been looking at a handful of cards and just missing out on them and I'm not mad about that. I've been putting in my max bid. If I don't get it, I don't get it. So now we can jump over, speaking of Jackson Holiday, and look at some of his cards in particular. And I just put in his graded cards uh, over the last 90 days. We've got all of his Bowman first and a bunch of other cards in here. And I can sort by price change in uh, what I would say is ascending order, meaning by the lowest, the biggest price decrease essentially and going up. I can see right here, his 2022 Bowman draft base PSA 9 down 55% over the last 90 days. This is not a card in particular that I would be going after this one here, this Bowman's best. This is, like I said, it's a top prospects refractor. It's an insert. This is not a Bowman first. This is not a card that I would be chasing after. Even though if he gets hot, that card will go up. Like I said, the more liquid ones tend to be the Bowman first. So I'm going to look and keep my eyes on those. And this is how I would approach this. I'd find a player who I'm interested in. I'd go over to price movements and I'd start looking at the cards that have gone down the most in price and kind of go from there. Okay, so let's jump over and look at some Jackson Holiday cards. And let's start out with the obvious one, which is Bowman, uh, Bowman Draft Auto. This is the Chrome Draft Picks Auto out of Bowman Draft. I've got it here in raw, PSA 9 and PSA 10. And I'm just looking at this over time. Now, this is only Pop 83 and a PSA 10. The last one that sold was back on August 13th. So this is not a card that is selling regularly. If I look at his PSA 9, uh, which is a much higher pop at 280. So obviously the gem rate on this card, not spectacular. This card actually started to dip down here uh, under the zero percentage line over the last 90 days. And then this most recent sale spiked up. And this is what I'm talking about. Like don't get kind of caught up in the moment and overpay. You might've been looking at this price, which is down 13% at $432. Then somebody jumps up and pays another $600. So you have sort of this variance from you know auction to auction. Some of the auction houses have prices on these cards that will go lower. So you can keep your eyes on that. And then same thing here with the raw one. We're still trending above the 0% line. So this isn't a card right now on any of these transactions that have happened that I'd be looking at and saying, yeah, let me get in right now. I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for seasonal discounts. And so that's what I'm going to do. So if I jump over and I look at, for example, his uh, Bowman Chrome Refractor, this is his first. Obviously, who doesn't love a good refractor? I've got his PSA 9, his PSA 10, and his SGC 10. And once again, I'm looking at the last, uh, we'll go last 90 days, let me just update it one day here. And you can see some starting to dip down here over the last few days, uh, including on his Bowman Refractor PSA 9, down, now down 29%, pretty much flat on the PSA 10. But this is where it gets interesting. Look at this SGC 10, 42%. This is what it, it is down on this last sale. Somebody got a really good deal on this card and they found it maybe ending at a weird time or who knows what, or somebody just wasn't looking for an SGC 10. You get that, I can tell you, SGC 10, crack and cross rate to a PSA 10 is a very high percentage if that's what you wanted to do. Or like I said, you could just hold on to this card. Let's just look at the chart for this card in particular. I'm gonna go last 180 days. You can see only two sales on this card. Last sale was up at $156. The most recent sale down at $90. And then when we look at the PSA 10, I'm gonna to go to the current price here, $197 for the PSA 10. So 90 bucks for an SGC 10, $197 for a PSA 10, which, you know, like I said, hasn't sold uh, or, you know, doesn't always sell as frequently depending on the gem rate, like we saw with the other auto. But in this case, this one is transacting more regularly. That looks like a no brainer to me. You get the card, you crack it, you send it in for 15, 20 bucks or whatever, and you have a pretty good rate, uh, hopefully of getting that in a PSA 10 and making it a little bit more liquid for yourself. What if you're looking at, uh, you know, trying to keep an eye on specific cards and specific prices? This is a hack that I love to promote. I use it personally a lot. If you find some cards that you wanna, you know, 
wait until they drop below a certain price, use price alerts. So if you have any card in Market Movers, you click on this little bell icon, and it's gonna pop it open and say, what do you wanna set your price threshold at? And do you want us to let you know when it goes above or below? It'll send you a push notification through the mobile app, it'll send you an email, and you can always come into the alerts page within the web and mobile versions to see the status of these. So I said, hey, I was looking at this PSA 9, and I'm seeing you know, what this card was selling for a while, you know, just a few months ago peaked out at 165 bucks. I said, well, if it gets back down into this price range right here, which is $60, I'm definitely a buyer on this card. I really think Jackson Holiday has a lot of upside. He's really impressed me so far in the minors at least, which doesn't always translate. So I've been looking at this card and I said, you know, let me know if it drops down under 60 bucks. I definitely want to do that. Looks like the last few sales have been around 85, 90 dollars. So it's not quite down in that threshold necessarily, but that might be the, a card that I wanna go after. And even at this price point, actually, I'm probably interested in it because I think it's got that 110, 120, $150 price potential when he gets called up. And it's probably not gonna be an if, it's gonna be when. The other thing here is the PSA 10, if you look at this, $351 for a PSA 10, $89 for a PSA 9, and the gem rate isn't really the problem here. It's not like there's only a few of these. So if I click on this, I can see uh, 292 on the PSA 9, 123, okay, it's about half of that. Sometimes we see that with Sapphire. That to me, that multiplier is kind of skewed. We're looking at like an almost 4X multiplier on the 10 to the nine. And this was that uh, point that I made about looking for those multipliers. And it was the second point I made. Look for those opportunities. The 10 has not come down nearly as much as the nine has if you look at the prices. It's still hovering right up here, not too far from the max point. So that's why I'd be looking at a nine. All right, last player, same thing. You could do the same thing with Jackson Churio, the other Jackson and the top two uh, ranking list for the, for the top 100. And I would come over here and look at some of his prices. And you can see as well on his Sapphire Bowman first, uh, to use that as an example, again, these cards all starting to trend downward. There was a huge sale down here on this card, down 50% but you can see all these cards now starting to show at a 15 to 20% discount already. And I would expect that heading into the end of October, maybe first week of November, right on the other side of the World Series, we're gonna have the NBA rolling, football's going, NHL, all these other sports, people starting to gear up for the holidays. People are not thinking Bowman prospecting, and I think there will be some real discounts on these cards. So as always, what do you think? Do you like Bowman prospecting? Is now the time to buy? Let me know down in the comments. While you're down there, do me a huge favor and make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, and do me a favor too and share this with a friend who might like to prospect. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.